In the previous video, we saw how to conduct linear regression with a scale dependent variable and one scale independent variable. I'm now going to show you how to add categorical variables into this. And the method that I'm going to show you involves using the univariate general linear model approach in SPSS. It's a little bit different to doing it through the regression um, and linear command that we might have looked at in class. And I'm going to start by making some selections, first of all. And because we're going to perform a household level analysis, we're going to look at household income. I'm going to set the data to just include cases uh, that contain or to um, to case lines that include the household information. And in the silk data set, this is where person number equals one. So you'll see here for each of the individuals in the data set, they get a person number according to their household and person one is the household reference line. So if we want to include just households, uh, again, some of this is taken care of automatically because the, the non-household lines will just show up as missing for some of the household level variables, but it's always good practice to make your selections in advance. So we're going to select this if condition and it's if person number equals one and that's going to limit our data set just to households. We can make all kinds of different selections if we wished. We could restrict the data to certain income bands, uh, certain categories like people in employment. We might want to exclude retired people or young people or focus on a particular age cohort. Selections allow us to do that. So how does it work if we want to include a categorical independent variable? In this case, we're going to look at a model that predicts household disposable income, and we're going to use tenure status as our independent variable. It's always a good idea to take a look at our variables first of all, and we're just going to have a quick look at the independent variable, which is tenure status. In the silk, we have two tenure status variables. Uh, one is more detailed than the other. The first one is the short one, and the second one is this TENST2 variable, which is the one we're going to use. So we have about 51.8% of the sample in the own outright category. And remember that this also includes uh, individuals across the entire age band, which will also include retired people. So there are some additional selections that you might want to make if you were using this data set in a full, um, in a full report. 23.7% of the sample own with a mortgage, 8.4% rent, and 10.1% are in council rent, council rented accommodation and 6% are living rent-free. Again, if we made some adjustments in the selection stage in terms of age, in terms of employment status, these proportions would change accordingly. So what we're going to do first of all then is we're going to get a more detailed look at our tenure status variable, that's our independent variable. And if we transfer it over here to the codebook variables box, we got the labels that are attached to each code. So you'll see this one is coded a little bit different. We've got 11, 12, 21, 22, and 23 for each of the different categories. And we get the percentage over here this time, which is the unadjusted one. But you'll see here there's very few missing cases in this anyway, so they're, they're, fair, they're fairly close. Now, if we want to include this in a regression, we need to be careful in how we deal with this, because if we simply put a nominal level variable or an ordinal variable into a linear regression without first either transforming the variable or declaring it within our settings that it is categorical, then SPSS will simply treat this as an ordinary scale variable and will treat each of these numeric labels as quantities when in fact they are not. In our income variable, the numbers refer to real quantities. They refer to quantities of income. If it's an age variable, age refers to years. An education variable refers to years and so on. But for categorical variables, the numbers are simply indicators attached to these to each of these different categories. So an owner gets a code of 11, uh, a renter gets a code of 21 and so on. These categories have no inherent numerical meaning or numerical hierarchy. This is a nominal variable. So in the procedure then, we need to be careful about how we set this up. So I'm going to go to Analyze, General Linear Model and Univariate. And we'll start with our dependent variable, which is going to be household level disposable income. That's this NAT underscore disping. This is gross income and this is net income. So this is after taxes and transfers. And we transfer that to the dependent variable bo box. Now in the GLM setup, you need to be careful to put your categorical factors, ca categorical variables in here under fixed factors and your scale variables under covariates. I will include two of these now. So the first one that we're going to look at is tenure status. I'm going to transfer this over to fixed factors and we'll include another variable under covariates, covariates where we will look at um, the amount of social transfers in total household income. 
and that's this an underscore SOCT variable here. We transfer this over to covariates. Now the next thing we need to do is to make our selections and to tell SPSS what types of variables they are and what, and what we want to do with them. So I'm just clicking into model first of all on the top and I'm setting this to build terms. Now I'm going to transfer over my variables into the model box and I'm also going to declare this to be a main effect and I'm going to do this with the other variable as well to switch that to main effect so that for both of these we've got them in the model box and we've got main effects. If we don't do that we're going to get a very very complex table where each of these individual categories is taken to be an interaction effect and we get lots and lots of different parameters in the in the in the parameters box. So when I click continue the next thing I'm going to do is to go down to options and I'm going to ask it for parameter estimates and then we click continue. In your full analysis you might want also to save the residuals we're going to save uh, predicted values and we're going to save the standardized residuals and if we're looking for um, diagnostics of uh, undue influence we can also ask it to save Cook's distance for us. We click continue and again there's a range of different options here that you might want to play around with. We can get some, uh, we can get some automatic plots um, and some other tests for, um, for, for the distribution of residuals and so on. And once you're happy with your settings click OK and you get a number of different pieces of output here in the output box. So just like with the analyze linear regression approach uh, we get our ANOVA table we also get our adjusted R squared which is down here it's 0.131 we can and transform this to percentage terms as well and express it as 13.1 percent we also get our uh, helpfully the coding of our original variable for of our of our categorical variable up here which allows us to interpret the output down here in the parameter estimates window now by default in the GLM approach SPSS will take the final category as the reference category and this is important because we need to read each of these individual effects as the effect of being in this category relative to this category so what each of these these are the these are these are the coefficients over here the slopes and what this is telling us then is this is the effect on average household income of being in the own outright category relative to the rent free category so in other words the income for this group is minus 1428 so that's in, in the original units of the variable that's euros so the income um, on average for this group is 1428 euros less than that of this group for the own with mortgage group it's 30396 more than this group for the renter group it's 3433 again euros more than this group and for the council renter group it's 14908 less than this group so we need to read these effects as relative to each of these different ones sorry we need to we, we need to read each of these individual effects as the effect of this category relative to a base category which in this case is this one the rent free which is why we get an effect of zero here because we're reading the effect of this one relative to all of the others we also get um, a parameter for social transfers and this is telling us that each additional euro of household annual social transfers results in a 0.363 um, increase in disposable household income or is associated with and again that might seem like a small effect but we need to read this in terms of the original the original units um, it is likely or more likely that social transfers will vary by a lot more than simply euro amounts from household to household. So we would perhaps want to apply some additional transformations to this to express it in uh, hundreds or thousands units instead to get a little bit to make it a little bit more interpretable. We also get a p-value for each of these so we can identify the statistically significant uh, parameters. So we see here the ones that are appearing as statistically significant are the own with a mortgage category and the council rent category and we also get a confidence interval for each of these so we need to assess the width of these as well and also whether they cross from negative to positive in other words we want to be reasonably sure not just about the size of the effect but the direction of the effect we can see here that some of these the boundaries of these cross from negative to positive positive. and so once you're happy with that um, what you need to report this then is you need your ANOVA table here first of all with the overall model significance you've got your adjusted R squared you've got your coefficients for each of the different parameters and you've got one each so you've got for any of these categorical variables you will have um, the number of conditions or the number of categories in the variable minus one 
um, of coefficients to report. So in this case, we have a five category variable. There will be four coefficients to report from this and also your annual social transfers variable here. So that is how to conduct a, an ordinary least squares linear regression with categorical independent variables.